Hello ladies! Um, this is so exciting, it's only temporary, but I am back in my old house and I had rented out for a year and I'm selling it, I'm so gutted I'm selling it, but I just thought it's such a lovely house and um, so I thought I'd come back to my old bathroom and do a um, Secret 7, which I'm doing today on facial oils and facial oils are something I use nearly daily and they're a key part of my skincare routine. So I'm just gonna check I've got the camera the right way. There I have, yes. So I'm going to put my hair back. Oh my goodness, what I've gotta do first actually is cleanse my face because I've still got makeup on. I forgot. So, um, <laughs> so typical of me, isn't it? I mean, I just, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna start. I've gotta see what I've got. Because I haven't got much here and I know you all want things here because you'll be asking me diverse questions, but I'm gonna do, okay, yes, this is relevant actually. When I'm doing a facial oil of any kind, I need to have a very exfoliated skin because I want that oil to penetrate incredibly well. So the beginning of my skincare routine is going to be um, an exfoliator. And I'm gonna see what I've got. So I literally have four products with me. So I'm gonna do, first of all, a little bit of, um, this is so funny, a little bit of de Mamiel, which I took with me for traveling to cleanse my skin, and I'm gonna take, look, I have a little sink here, for those of you who remember the bathroom. Um, I'm gonna take my little Foreo, mini Foreo, and just rub that in there, being quite aggressive. But it is important if you think about how much we love an oil, we put it on, and sometimes I just never get through an unclean skin, too many dead skin cells on the surface. So. This is a very important part. I'm speeding up the process. Maiko is in the bedroom answering questions. So, Maiko, if there's any questions, darling, far away. Everybody's just saying hello, and I love that you're in the old bathroom. I know! Oh, God, I don't want to sell this house. I really don't. I was trying to persuade my, um, my CEO and saying, can we not make it the office? Can I not come back here? I love this bottle. It's best. It gives a light. I mean, that light makes me look 12. So I'm just going to take off the um, oil. And what I'm going to do is I'm doing it with a muslin cloth. So that's going to speed up the process. So if you don't have an exfoliator to hand, it's really good to invest in a muslin cloth. I use the Yves Long muslin cloth but they're expensive. You can go to Peter Jones, John Lewis, and buy some muslin and cut it up. So much cheaper. Um, so, so it's something to consider. I don't think the hot water tap is turned on. But let me just see. Um, okay, hold your horses. We'll get there. We'll get there in the end. Come on, water. Come on. There we go. So. Muslin cloths have a little bit of abrasion in them, and they just allow you to go in there and exfoliate a bit. So you're gonna really take off the dead skin. All right, so do that and go round. I am quite rough with my skin, you know that ladies and boys. But when you want to use an oil well, you've got to be. So just doing that, uh-huh. And I'm done, clean it off. The light's going a bit, the light was very good. That's going to just put this here and see if I can get more light. Yeah, a bit more like that. A little bit more light. Suddenly the light's gone. Thank God. Yeah, there. yeah, that's better. That's better. All right, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. You know me, it just takes a while. I've got a few little things here. So I'm going to start with one brilliant, brilliant oil. It's one of my favorite oils, and it's an oil that I was introduced to when I discovered Julia Hunter products. And Julia Hunter for a bit of background, is an amazingly eccentric but brilliant um, dermatologist doctor. She's based in LA and she's not like those kind of real LA people. She, she just, she has her attitude to skin I love. She believes tremendously in, in retinols, in, she does a lot of lasers in her office, but her biggest love in life is emu oil. And I've had conversations with her about emu oil because emu oil is from emus and emus are smelly. And the original formula for her emu oil, there it is, it's quite old, this one, 
So I don't think it's the one with the better smell. Let me just see. It's okay. What I'd call it, if I had to give you a smell, is it's slightly pungent. I have to be honest. But even though I'm particular about smells, the reason I glide over the slightly uncomfortable smell is because the therapeutic value of this oil is incredible if you have stressed skin or damaged skin or skin that's had a laser or skin that needs calming down. All right, so it's, there's no other oil, I think, that will do that. And, and omega oil is incredibly high in omega-3, omega-6, omega-9, I mean, emu oil. So inflammation is going to be reduced wrinkles, scars, things like that. I put it on little scars, it heals scars incredibly quickly. It helps produce elastin, elastin, and it just re-energizes your skin. So I will put it on, sometimes hold my nose. This is the original formula. Can I tell you the formula that came after this doesn't smell so much. And with this, usually when I'm using this oil, it could be that I had a laser, um, I had a PRP, you know, and I just felt, I want to just put nothing on my skin. Anyone at all who's had a peel, this is a phenomenal post peel product. Um, so if you've gone to a dermatologist, had a peel or you've done a home peel and it's kind of screwed up and your skin is very red and stressed, put this on. Um, there are two things I think that work very well in this area with three things. One is colloidal silver, which you can get in tubes, which is just this antibacterial taking down information product. Um, then you can get um, I is clinical recovery balm, eye shield, which is a great product for scars, but this got inflamed skin is the best. So I put it on gently because I'm not going to do a rigorous massage with this and I'd sleep in it. Um, I have even used this if I'm doing a retinol routine, but I feel my skin through that intense retinol routine about two weeks is getting very dry. At night, I'll do my peel from Julia Hunter. I'm doing a full Julia Hunter. I'll do my peel, then I'll do her vitamin A cream and, his, and her night regeneration cream, which I happen to have here. And then I'll put the emu on top because after about a week of doing that routine, I might feel my skin's a bit dry. But it's brilliant. It is available, I think, online, because I, sh I buy it from her site in America. Grace Beauty in London, you can also Google, they sell her products as well if you want it to come quicker. It is price wise, price wise, price wise, $135. But you need three drops, so it's gonna last you a year, okay, if that. This is your emergency go-to oil. All right, great, done that. I'm just gonna take this off. Um, any questions, Michael? Yeah. Does it help with, I think any, any kind of, any aggravated skin condition like rosacea, like eczema, it's going to be brilliant. Um, um, very helpful, yes. Okay. All right, that comes off. My skin by the end is going to be fantastic. What I haven't got in the bathroom today is I haven't got tools, and you know me and tools, I love to use a tool when I'm doing a facial massage. So I'm gonna go straight now to one of my most favorite oils, and this still is um, a tricky price, but they brought out a smaller size, which is Vintner's Daughter. And if you've followed me for a while, you'll know how much I love this oil, but I can't not include it in my Secret Seven because it's really high up there. It was introduced to me by Caroline Huron. She used it um, on a facial she did on me when I first met her. And I remember when she was doing the facial and at the end, she said, I'm gonna put this oil on you. And I was like, Oh, after a facial, oh no, I just wasn't into oils then, it's about four years ago. And then she put it on and I was just drawn in immediately by this oil. There is no other oil that's as intense, as rich, as um, has so many active ingredients. There's so many active ingredients and there's quite a lot of bergamot in there too, which for some people, you have to check how you are with things. But it's a base of grapeseed oil. It's got hazelnut oil, bergamot oil, it's really good when you're healing your skin as well. Um, all vitamins A, C, K. But if you just see the way it goes on like that, okay. And then it's sort of, it's running down this. Do you see it runs down quite slowly? Do you see that? I'd say it's a two mile an hour trickle, all right? Um, when I take oils, I generally put them in my hand. I'll do a scoop, I'm gonna do two scoops. Um, and I do a vigorous rubbing 
And I was doing this the other day with Miss Hill. She went, you don't need to rub that much. But I always have, and I've always felt that I want to rub enough to release. And she feels nervous that it goes on into, into your hands and not on your face. But I think there's an importance with this rubbing technique that you're heating up your hands. And as soon as you're going to get that friction and get that heat going with the oil, and then you put it on, its absorption into your skin is greater. So I just, I love doing that. Um, and I'll put it on later on. I'm gonna show you also a technique I do, sorry, I'm going to strip off, because I'm just gonna show you something I do that I think is important with this oil. With any oil, all right? But it's an area we don't always deal with, so hold on. Take it. Um, how many of you get stressed around here? And so I'm gonna take a bit more of this, my most expensive oil to do it with. And I'm going to do this little technique I do around my neck. So I'll just do this back and forth like that. And I'm really, it's like giving myself my own massage. But you know that muscle here? For me, this muscle gets very, very tight. And that just brings stress to my face. And what it also does is when you are stressed, and this is one of the reasons that I love oils so much, is they don't just give your skin a sense of hydration or have lovely ingredients to penetrate. But if you massage correctly with these oils, and it's not just about massaging on the face, you release your face from tension. And sometimes if you go and see a great chiropractor or a, or a masseuse, they always work on an area. You say, oh, it hurts here, and then they work down there, and you think, why are they doing that? And there's a reason. So I feel that our face and the tension in our face is controlled very much by this muscle here. Well, I don't know what it's called. Um, but when I was speaking to a plastic surgeon once and he said, when you lift a face, it's that muscle that's key. So this muscle goes down, it goes in the, here and then around here and that tension, I can feel that bubble of tension there because I got a lot going on at the moment, exciting, but a lot going on. So I really focus this on this and then I'll do the other side and I'll just feel after a while and then I get into this rhythm. So in the morning, first thing, if I'm in a rush, I'll just do this rhythm and it just, or, or, you know, when you get back from work or back from a tough time with your kids or back from just needing to de-stress, just to do this, just to do this. You could do it with me if you're watching on a lovely afternoon in London. <laughs> um, but that's really good for you. You can see my face as we come back to life. And then another classic I do is I do my little sort of scissoring here. And any of you who have frown lines, like that, I don't have any because of Botox, but you know, many of us can have this, and if I stop doing Botox, I'll have it, is just to release that too. Just feel where you feel that tension in your face when you go like this, and then when you're releasing it. So a great way to work out where tension is on your face is do this, and then release it, and just feel where those muscles are releasing. So I'm feeling a releasing there, I'm feeling a lot here, and I'm feeling a lot on the jawline. And that will really help you to know where you hold tension in your face. So I'm gonna release here, like that, release, release, release. And then also another good one is to go in, but not with long nails, and just press there and release that point. Just push in there for a second. Take a breath, I always forget to take a breath. And release like that, okay? All right, so that is Vinda's Daughter, the most expensive one here. It is, Jesus Christ, it's gone up, it's 175 pounds. They have a small one, I think it's 50. This lasts me so long. I need half a pipette and I just love it. And my skin just soaks it up. Um, I'm gonna go now on to a very good one if you do have psoriasis or a rosacea, a bit of eczema, which is rosehip. And rosehip, um, as many of you know, is a very good organic, let me just put that behind so you can see it properly, is it focusing? It's just a very good, um, oil that helps with scarring and it has lots of fatty acids in it as well. It's got a very good pH balance, this oil. Um, and Trilogy was founded by two sisters. I started with just five rosehip products and they now have about 40 products and they've really expanded their range. Um, and it is 31 pounds. I get it in um, Boots. No, I don't get in Boots, I'm telling like in Whole Foods because next to Boots on Ken High Street. And I'll just show you the kind of the measure of the of the baby. There we go. So you see it's a lighter oil. Rose is lighter on. You go on there and you can see it's, you can already tell it's a bit drippier. Right, that's a bit drippier. 
you see? But really a sensitive skin, needing some nurturing. Funnily enough, I was introduced to this product by Susanna, my erstwhile partner. The smell, I don't know how many of you have actually smelt rosehip, but it's quite a woody smell. It's not too much of a rosy smell. It's more of an earthy smell. But nice, nurturing, not flowery at all. Yeah, like you're going to, like you're a sort of, let's say you're a pig ferreting out truffles in an Italian forest. You might smell that when you get to the bottom of the bark of the tree. That's the kind of smell it is. So I'm gonna do my little thing again. There we go. And just put it on. So I would say this could be for anybody. Um, price point, really good price point. Quality of ingredients, good quality of ingredients. Efficacy, great. Um, and I'm gonna do the same here, actually. I'm just still feel. And this one, because it's a thinner oil, if you have an oilier skin, a lot of people with an oilier skin are, are nervous of um, using an oil. And this actually um, is good too for an oilier skin. So I just do a bit of that. And I love, the, I do another movement. I'm so sorry if I'm repeating myself because I just obsessed with this, so I do it on every video. But I do this thing where I really relax my fingers, okay? Really relax your fingers. And, um, and then I just do this kind of picking up of my skin. So I'm not hard hand like that. It's this real relax, but very fast. Getting the blood flow lightly there. And if I'm going out in the evening and I need to really wake up my face and sort of give myself a mini facelift, this is the one I'll do the most. Like that. There. Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. It's also incredibly good for toning, what's that part of your arm called? Micro, micro, tricep. It's good tricep. Better than going to a gym and being smelly. I did go to the gym today. Any of you follow me on Instagram? I've been to the gym this morning. I did a Pilates class. I'm doing that. Get fit in August. Okay, you can see the blood rushing to my face. This, so really relaxed hands. You sometimes have to kind of actually relax your hands a bit more. Micro, any questions, darling? So it doesn't hurt. I mean, it might be, look, I'm torturing my face, but it's, it's a very, I mean, if I go close like this, look, I'm doing this. I'm doing that, but I'm doing it very fast. Just light, light movements like that. So that, that's your kind of wake up, going out for dinner massage, and that's Trilogy. I'll show it to you again. There you go. Is Rosehip good for breakouts? Good for what? Breakouts. Breakouts. Well, because it's a, it's not too fatty as an oil. It's not going to clog your pores. So I think if you've got breakouts, but I have an oil I go straight to now, which is a good oil if you are spotty. Breakout, etc. So can you use an oil if you suffer from acne? Yes, you can. But you have to be a little bit careful. There are too many fatty acids in it, and it's gonna be an oil that will balance out. So, Jolique is called actually skin balancing, can you put that up there, skin balancing facial oil. And Jolique, this is a guy, wonderful man, Jürgen Klein, and he was a biochemist, and his wife Ulrika, and she was a botanist. And they had a real passion about, about nature. And it was, it was slightly after Dr. Hauschka's time, but it was probably the second brand like that, that was arranged based on alchemy, herbal medicine, homeopathy. So the big, things in this are macadamia oil, which is very good for kind of your skin's barrier function and helps with water retention lost. Avocado oil, which is very good, vitamin E in it, um, and potassium. But this oil really keeps your skin hydrated, but I have given it to women who have breakouts and it hasn't broken them out. Um, so I'm just going to show you the, you see it's a little bit darker in color, there we are, I think there, color. So there, I'm gonna go. The drip, it's a bit, it's as runny, yes, it's definitely as runny as, um, as the other one. I'm just weirdly, I'm just gonna weirdly say this, but runnier oils are better if you have acne. Thicker oils aren't. The smell is sort of slightly nutty. Let me just put a bit more on, because I want to just get to the bottom of that smell. Macadamia. I don't really smell avocado. I mean, who, who, who here can smell avocado? 
I can't smell avocado easily, but macadamia I can smell, and there's macadamia oil. So I'm gonna put that in, and I'm gonna show you another different massage. Any questions? Can you just repeat which one that is? This one is Jolique Skin Balancing Oil. There you go. It is, price wipes, 38 pounds. And the last year, it's a big. Oh, I mean, you know what? If somebody says it's a bath oil or a, or a skin oil, usually they're just using a lower grade oil if it's a bath oil. Um, and the base in which that um, bath essence sits might be more a kind of, you know, not such a small molecule oil that it would fit well to get, penetrate your skin on your face. So I'd say definitely you can use from your face into your bath, but I wouldn't use your bath on your face. Okay, um, I'm gonna give you now another little, this is a good one if a few of you have problems with your lymphatic system. And I had a while, some of you might have noticed, a few months ago when I had quite, I had bags here a little bit. And I was eating a lot of dairy, huge amount of dairy, which was having an effect on that. And my lymphatic system was not draining. And I, I always know when I'm run down and my immunity is run down because my lymphatic system will become sluggish and I will get um, the reflection of that in my skin. So if you want to clean your lymphatic system out, this is the massage I do. Um, so if you want to get to your eye, you don't start with your eye because to clean your lymphatic system out, you need to start around your neck and you need to bring it down your clavicle and release. So I will always start with this. So I'll go underneath my neck, go up to my ear, down, keep the pressure. It can be very light pressure, but keep the pressure on because we're going on those very tiny lymphatic um, little tubes, or um, well, lymphatic system. So you're going up, keep the pressure, I mean, keep the thing on, and then when you get to your clavicle, that little hollow bit, you can release. So you just do this. And then once you get into it, you can just do that. So you start there, one side, you can just get that rhythm going, but make sure you go up to your ear, bring it down. So what you're doing is you're releasing the toxins as you go up your face. So it means by the time you get to your eye area, there is a clear path to release your toxin. That's what I believe anyway. So I'm going to do the other side, I'm just going to show you like that. So keep it up and go down, up, around the end, down, up, right the end, down. Then you get onto the jaw, and when you do, well, the lower face, you can just go, use all four fingers and go down and then take your other hand and go down, but don't release the hand that's down there until you've got past your, um, your little hollow because that's where it's going to release. So you do that and you can do it at a speed. You don't need to do it that hard um, because it's so, it's just under the skin, above your blood vessels and it's like a hair's breadth. It's the tiniest system but it's very, very sensitive. So if you press too hard, you'll just block it. Um, and then do the other side, And then when you've done that, I mean, I'd probably do, if I, if I really was puffy here, I'd probably do maybe like 20 like that. And I'll do, tw I'll do 20 here, 20 like that. And then I'll go under, under my eyes. So then I'll go here like that, take it around my eye and down. Still keeping your finger like that. And down. And then when you've done 20 of those, you can then just do a bit of pressure pointing here, which releases a bit more. So it's that kind of, imagine you've got a hose and you're putting your hat, you're putting your foot on the hose, so you're stopping the pressure and then releasing it. So it makes it whoosh down, and that's what you want to do. Once you've stimulated a bit, so you then go here, just like go in between my eyes like that, gently on and release. And I go down here, gently on. And release, and then here, gently on, and release. And then if I want to do pressing, some people do this pressing, don't press, lift it off, press, lift it off, because you still need to carry the toxin out, so you can go down, press, go to the next bit, press, go to the next bit, press, go to the next bit, press, pull it out, and go down. So do this side, press, pull it out, press, pull it out, press, pull it out, press, pull it out, press, and go down. Okay, so that is lymphatic release. And then also I kind of, you know, I just would probably work a little bit here and just do a bit of that. 
and then I'm just going to do put the rest on my arm because I don't want to waste the oil. It's so nice. Um, there we go. All right, that's that one. Okay, any questions? do is I sort of like to, I mean it depends so much on our schedule and what we're doing, but I quite like to have my Sunday morning time when I do a little facial or Sunday evening because that's a time when I'm not rushing and I think when you're doing this kind of thing it's really nice to take time and then I sometimes do like a Monday evening if I'm not doing anything and I've just got back from work. Um, I'm going to go now to a really inexpensive oil version. This is the cheapest oil I've got and it's the Ordinary there and this is um organic cold pressed rosehip oil it's nine pounds so it's got a lot of the elements that the trilogy one has not such high grade i think but it has a trans retinoid in it or vitamin a um so they have i don't know what the percentage is of that but it has vitamin a omega fatty acids um and so just general skin texture pigmentation so it's in a dark hole so there it is there take it like that and you can see it's quite dark in color, but it's, it's dribbly, it's really dribbly. So it's good for the price point. You know that they're doing the right thing. It smells, it smells, if I compare it to Trilogy, Trilogy has more depth in its smell of rosehip, and this is a, a whiff of rosehip and then it's gone. But, and I smell fatty omegas. I don't know how I can convey to you what that smells like, but like, you know if you sometimes go up to a raw bit of meat, there's a slight smell from that fat if it's got a layer of fat on it. I know this sounds disgusting, but I want to try and introduce you to what that is because it's an acquired taste rosehip. Yeah, okay. So this goes on and it's got a nice feel. I think you can massage incredibly well with this one too, because I can do all my little things with this. I feel the penetration of it is different from the rose hip, and definitely you can tell once you start using oils the difference from this and Binder's Daughter, for example, because you really feel the penetration. I feel this slightly sitting on my skin, but as an oil to use for a massage technique, I think it's perfectly acceptable and nice, and we know rose hip has good benefits. So that's that one. And let's see what else I've got here. I think I've got my newest acquisition. Oh, I've got two, two more that I love. <laughs> if you're still, if you're still with me, ladies. All right. So um, this is 360 megahertz rose um, Otto oil, and this is a man obsessed. Plumby Botanics is a range this man established, and he did. His first was rose otter oil, and this is actually age repair sleep elixir, all right. Um, it has rose otter in it and moringa oil. The moringa oil is amazing because it has vitamin A, vitamin B, C, and D. It's anti-inflammatory. It's got very active plant botanicals. It gives you radiant skin. It does a lot. And the founder of this was in a totally different business, but obsessed with oils and at at some stage also did a lot with aromatherapy and, and gives massages to friends and things. But he's, he's been, you know, this is a person, there's not many of the people on this list that I personally meet because I kind of like to discover things myself. But I met this person before they started with the on, they were telling me what they were doing and telling me about the Moringa tree and Plant Me Botanics is about planting trees, got an incredibly nice story because they plant trees to maintain um, a good um, balance in the world of tree versus man and they use some of the proceeds of that to do that so it's kind of it's great but he's done very clever things got good good ingredients it is 75 pounds but you never spill any because it has a rollerball a rollerball clever so you just go like that do a few rollers like that and it's got in it also oh, i know it has i don't know why i haven't written it down here but it has no roly I know it has no really. I can smell it. My favourite bloody oil. Um, so I'm just going to put a bit on that because I just adore it. Put it putting on too much. Um, and it is, you can just feel the richness and the texture of this oil. Immediate penetration. It's, it's fantastic. 
I mean, I'd nearly say it's on a par with Vintners in terms of how great it is. Is it going? Oh, I'm back again. Okay. So, this baby, this baby, Sleep Elixir. Beautiful texture, amazing to massage with, but most importantly, when I have used this, and I do use this, what I'll do with my oils, and somebody asked me how I can use, I'll do the Sunday morning on my facial, and I'll do something midweek. But sometimes if I've done, as I said at the beginning, quite a strong routine for a couple of weeks on some retinol or peeling thing that I might have done transitionally in season, so I'll do it in September and I'll do it coming out of winter, quite a strong regime. I will then do a week of literally just doing facial oils and this is the one I go to and I put it on at night. And so it's just, because my skin is so resurfaced and so clean, it's just inhaling all those wonderful ingredients. And I do. Oh, there we are again. Sorry, I keep cutting out. If I cut out again, I apologize, but we'll try and keep it going. I'm nearly at the end. So, poor bellows. And my final one is my newest and um, it's from a brand I love. I've been using her cleanser a lot and I've been using her, um, her day face serum which I love but it's Romilly Wild, there you go Romilly Wild and she started this company, I don't know how many years ago this company started, 75 pounds, it's got wild Abyssinian oil which I've never heard about but unlike lots of other plant oils it doesn't oxidize so quickly so um, it's just a clever little oil. It has a 22 fatty acids, anti-inflammatory, and it has camellia oil in it, which is a wonderful moisturizer and acids. Um, so it's kind of nearly more a serum than an oil. If I put it like this, you see, it sort of it comes out in a serum-y way. There it is, I'm using way too much. Um, the smell of all of this range from Romilly Wild is one of the nicest, like if I had Demaniel and Romilly Wild, they're on a par um, of this smell. And you smell that camellia oil, and it could be the wild Abyssinian as well, but you know, just a part of the application of these oils, especially the more expensive ones, is to inhale that oil. Because if you think of aromatherapy, it's as much about the inhalation through your nose as it is about the application on your skin. So I have time to smell that delicate white flower smell. It's not too sweet, it's just beautiful. And I have been known when my skin, when my hair is really dry, that I will just, just, just do that. I mean, I'll even do it now, I'll just do that because I just want that smell. It's like I sometimes meet, I have this wonderful friend in India and they do a lot of um, head massage there. And a lot of women put oils, you know, they have a lot Oh, there we go. Okay, so ladies, that's it. I'll show it again, Romilly Wilde's one. Um, those are my oils. They all serve a different purpose. I hope there's ones there for different price points. The light in my bathroom is going, so I'm gonna finish. Um, and I hope that was a nice afternoon treat for you. And you know, it's the one thing I like probably more than anything else about oils is it makes us have a relationship with our skin and touch and feel our skin and check in with our skin, with our hands. And um, that's a precious thing that we need to do, nurturing ourselves. So I'm gonna take the excess oil here and have a little bit of a body massage and I'll speak to you all soon.